What up, players? It is Warbots today up in the smug. Welcome to a wrap-up video of some Tyranids I've been working on. These are for a High Fleet Behemoth commission that my client uh, requested I do a Zoanthrope, which you see in front of you. Three Tyranid Warriors, a Carnifex, and a Broodlord. So we're going to take a look at the models, and I'm going to walk you through my color scheme. And yeah, I hope you guys like it. So this is an old metal model beautiful sculpt i really really love how just big and beefy it feels like an art piece rather than a, a model for a miniatures war game and look at the sculpting and the detail there on his giant head so the skin is done with mephiston red the plates are done with incubi darkness the little pokey claws there the talons are done with abaddon black just three colors, base coat the entire model. I'm not even touching the brain yet, just doing base coats. Then to shade, I used Rhinox Hide with uh, Lamin Medium, thinning it down. So you'll get a nice, very rich, dark brown that is not too thick in the pigment. So it'll, it'll dry really, really nicely in the shades. You can see it between the ribs and in the shadows of the, the folds of the head. And... Um, in between each of these these armor plates. Just a beautiful, beautiful shade. My favorite shade, not Agrax Earth Shade. Just take some Rhinox Hide, go through the effort of putting it in a little plastic clamshell, like one you get for any you know single model purchase. Just cut out the clamshell, and instead of doing a wet palette with it, you might be able to use that to make some of your washes. And that's basically just Lamian medium in any color you want. Experiment, find some things that you like, whatever works for you. For me, painting off of red, that dark brown Rhinox hide was perfect. Then you bring back your colors with the Mephiston red for the skin, the Incubi darkness for the carapace, and I used Mephiston, no, uh, Mechanicum scale gray to start highlighting the black talons. I also painted in the teeth at this point with Rackarth Flesh. Then the second highlight for the red was Evil Sun Scarlet. And then the third highlight, you could see it on uh, some of the yellow. If you see any yellow on the red skin, that's basically Ungor Flesh right there on the ribs. Really, really thinly painted onto the most prominent areas. Beautiful highlight color. And then for the blue scales, I used Dawnstone and then I used Carrick Stone. And you'll notice that I really stuck to the edges, the spines, the uh, very prominently sharp points of that carapace. So that is the model for the brains. I did Bugman's Glow, and then I highlighted with some Cadian Flesh Tone and some Kislev Flesh, and then I added a little bit of Deck Tan, or I guess you could use Pallid Witch Flesh, so that you could really see the very pale gray, but pink also, some very beautiful tones in that brain matter. And then I shaded with Raikland Flesh Shade, very thin, thin down Raikland Flesh Shade. And then I highlighted back up with my, my Deck Tan and my Kislev Flesh. And that green glow, the glowy bits are basically just moot green, watered down and painted into the cracks between all that pulpy gray matter. Very, very cool. Some art coat in the mouth to make it look like he, his mouth is glistening and he's hungry and he's ready to to chomp 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 and there you go so i use that same color scheme for all of my models let's take a look at some tyranid warriors next you might remember i had unboxed these bad boys a while ago they're all painted up using the color scheme that i had just gone over with you the flesh whip is basically just Bugman's Glow highlighted with Cadian Flesh Tone, shaded with a little bit of Raikland Flesh Shade and brought back up. There's so many different skin recipes you can use and that's just one that I found works uh, pretty well and is very, very easy to replicate and so it lets you really play with the c color tones and kind of do whatever you want to bring out the, the effect that you want. I wanted kind of a pale skin color pink skin color, but also just a very nice pale Caucasian for the flesh whip. So you can see it really bounces off of the red. When your eyes immediately go to the red skin, the blue armor plates, and then that flesh whip is, is very striking, I think, so that when this person, when my client is playing with these models, his opponent can clearly see what they're armed with. The bone swords. Okay, I decided to go with a black base coat, Abaddon Black for the bone swords and then I highlighted up by stippling rather than doing the same kind of uh, edge highlighting that I do for the sighting talons I stippled 
first it was cabalite green and then sybarite green. So you have a very interesting looking stippled uh, depth to the swords, whereas the sighting talons look very sharp and deadly. The bone swords, in contrast, look very, very odd and alien. They have a very weird look to them. So that is our three Tyranid warriors. And next I want to go over this giant Carnifex monster. He's not really giant when you consider some of the bigger ones like the Moloch and the Harpy, but you know, back in the day the Carnifex was a, this huge, just like tank-like monster. Beautiful, beautiful, great fun to paint, so much detail. I used that Ungor flesh in some spot colors to really bring out the reds and kind of show the effect of the skin stretching as the monster is moving. So it's a living living like artillery piece like vehicle just you know hulking its way down the battlefield so i wanted the light to kind of reflect off of the red show that the sinews and the muscles are of this giant huge organism are just working over time uh what else to talk about the cannon here you're using the same kind of flesh recipe for the uh the what would you call it the tube the tongues for all of my Tyranids are done with a base coat of Screamer Pink, shaded with, I think it's Caraburg Crimson, brought back up with Screamer Pink, and then highlighted by adding little bits of Emperor's Children. So it's very, very pink highlight, but mostly you see just the, the darker colors of the, that rich purple. And I use skin tones for the ribbing inside the cannon there, as well as the tube underneath. A lot of fun, a lot of fun to paint this this monster. I love painting giant turned monsters. I think they're they're really, really great. I have an exocrine that I'm gonna be working on, so stay tuned for that. That is gonna be just out of this world. Okay, the last model I wanna show you is our Brood Lord here. And uh, this, again, is from the Death Storm kit. Beautiful model. So much fun to paint and uh, really just very, very expressive. Games Workshop's later releases like this one has so much detail that you could play with. With the shading and like creating the depth and the highlights, you can really, really go to town. Take a look at the Ungor flesh work there on the the muscles of the, the, the calf there, the leg, all of the spines. So you can really go to town. You can do as much as you want and your model will benefit from all of the extra detail. You don't have to do any of it. If I basically stopped at highlighting back up with Mephiston Red, even going up a, just a touch with Evil Sun Scarlet, then the model would look good anyways. But I think when you put in that extra effort, it really, really shows. And your models are all the better for it. All right, that's it. We're running up on eight minutes. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little look at my Tyranid commission. I'm going to be doing a wrap-up video of some other things. Oh yeah, my, my AE World War II Soviets. Those are just so much fun. And uh, just plenty more projects coming, coming down the line. I've uh, kind of got a tentative studio set up with a new board on which to paint. I really don't want to paint against this. This is like a photo booth more or like a light booth. And so it was uh, more... I guess it made more sense to just film my showcase videos on them, but I, I really want to get back to tutorials. It's what people kind of associate with my channel, and it's uh, what I've been promising my patrons on Patreon, my viewers on YouTube, everybody that I know has been asking me, you know, when are you going to be doing more tutorials? I've got all these models that I'm working on commissions for that I haven't been able to to really do a full-fledged tutorial for. I really want to get back in the swing of it, do more video reviews, unboxings, all of that good stuff. So yeah, stay tuned for all of that. I really, really hope I can uh, have you guys join me on 2016. It's going to be a great year. This is a great project to start the year off with, and I want to thank you for watching. Leave a comment down below. Hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Head over to my Patreon if you want to see what else I've got going on. I've got that Bohemian Heresy song that <laughs> the Lady Boss and I are finishing up recording. I've got, uh, what am I doing over there? Oh, I'm doing movie reviews too, so that's a thing if you want to see what movies I've got playing in the background when I'm working on my hobby. Last night it was this movie called Last Nights with Clive Owen and Morgan Freeman, so if you want to hear my thoughts on that, you can head over there. Basically any movie, it's anything that I draw insp inspiration from, so there's going to be like Game of Thrones reviews coming out when the series kicks back up in April. 
Uh, I've, I've been re-watching Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, a bunch of stuff. So I'll be posting up. It could be a written review like this last one was. It could be an MP3 that you download to your computer or your phone and just listen to. Or it could be a link to a YouTube video that is going to be just really more for anyone who's on Patreon. So follow me there. Follow me here. Follow me everywhere. I am uh, going to have a great year and I hope you do as well. And I hope we can just really grow our hobby and community here in 2016. Yes, you. I'm talking to you.